In this lecture, we are going to discuss how to select rows and columns from a data frame. This is analogous to indexing an array. So for example, with a NumPy array, I can ask, give me the element at row zero, column zero. I would use the square bracket notation and pass in a zero comma zero. So let's see if that works with a data frame. So we'll do df zero comma zero. As you can see, this does not work. So before we do anything else, let's check the columns of the data frame by using the attribute called columns. So that's df.columns. This returns an index object with the column names. Note that you can also do assignment on this attribute with a list of column names. So let's say I don't like the fact that the name column is the only one that is capitalized since it offends my sense of uniformity. So let's change that to lowercase. We can do df.columns and then just send in a list. Change that to lowercase and there we go. And we can also check that it worked. All right, so it works. All right, so here's an idea. What if I pass in one of these column names into the square brackets? So let's try df open. As you can see, this returns the open column of the data frame. We can also select multiple columns by using a list of column names. So let's try df open bracket, open bracket, open, close. And that returns both columns. Now, just out of curiosity, let's check the data type for the open column. So that's type open. Interesting, so it's a series. Now let's check the type of the open and close columns. So this is a data frame. The lesson here is that when you only have one dimension in pandas, it's typically stored as a series. If it's two dimensional, it's a data frame. At this point, you might be thinking pandas is very weird because square brackets are used to select columns, whereas in NumPy and every other kind of array, the square brackets would usually select the rows. The obvious question now is, how do we select a row in a data frame? The answer is that we can accomplish this using the iloc and the loc attributes. So we can do df.iloc of zero and this returns the zeroth column of the data frame. You might want to double check that. We can also do df.loc of zero, and this also returns that same row. So you might be wondering, what's the difference? The difference is that iloc is used for integer indices no matter what, whereas loc selects the row by the index label. And it just so happens that in our data frame, they are one and the same. To demonstrate this difference, let's load in our data frame again, but this time we'll specify that the date column should be the index. So we'll do df2 equals pd.read csv as bucks.csv, and then we'll say index call equals date. By the way, you're strongly encouraged to read the documentation for pandas. There are many arguments for the many functions that pandas has, and you'll basically never be able to remember them all. So get used to using the documentation. Now let's do df2.head. So as you can see, the date column appears to now have some kind of special status. In fact, it's the index for this data frame. So now we can do df2.loc and then we can pass in one of these indices. And this returns the first row of the data frame. And by the way, if we check the type of this row, we can see that it's also a series. So both individual rows and individual columns are series objects. Now let's talk about how we can select multiple rows of a data frame. Suppose I want all the rows where the open price was greater than 64. So I can do df open bracket df open greater than 64. All right, so these are all the rows where the open price is greater than 64. 
Now suppose I want all the rows where the name is not Starbucks. So I can do df df name not equal s bucks. Okay, so we have no rows where the name is not Starbucks. So it seems that using the square bracket notation, I can pass in something like a Boolean. Code like this works from the inside out. So let's check what this Boolean thing actually is. And let's check the type. So perhaps not unsurprisingly, it's a series containing Boolean values. So the square brackets on a data frame accept a Boolean series as input. Now, oddly, this behavior does match how NumPy arrays work. In my opinion, NumPy is more consistent here because this involves row selection and not column selection. So let's do this. Let's do import NumPy as NP, A equals NP dot A range 10. Let's just see what A is. So this is an array of integers from zero to 10. Now let's say I just want to keep the even numbers. Then I can do a open bracket, a mod two equals equals zero. And this gives me all the even numbers in that array. Now as homework, you can check the data type of the thing we just passed into the square brackets. So a mod two equals equals zero. Now in building machine learning algorithms, you usually want to work with arrays of numbers and not data frames, which can contain all kinds of objects. So how can we convert a data frame into a NumPy array? We can use the values attribute. So that's just df.values. Now, unfortunately, this gives us the dtype object, which is not what we want if we're doing machine learning because now there are strings inside of this array. So let's see what happens if we only select the numerical columns. So let's do a equals df open close values and we'll check what a is. Okay, so now we have a proper array of numbers. Let's check the type of a. All right, so it's a NumPy array as expected. All right, so suppose now that we've done what we needed to do with our data frame, we would like to save it to a file. This is accomplished with the to CSV function. So let's say I want to keep only the open and close columns. Then I can do small df equals df open close. And then I can do small df dot to CSV output dot CSV. Okay, and that just saved my data frame to a file called output.csv. Now we can use the Linux command to see what's in our file. So we can do head output.csv. Now, unfortunately, there seems to be a pretty useless index column in our file. Luckily, we can get rid of this. So we'll do this same line. And we'll add a new argument, index equals false. Now we can try the head command again. And the index column is gone. 